Hello, everyone. As said, my name is Derek Musangu, and it, it is an honor to be in front of you guys on this amazing international platform that the TEDx is. And I think we should stand up and clap our hands in recognition for those people who have made this event possible. Thank you so much, because it is so amazing that we are given this ability in the DRC, a country where people think that we live upside down and nothing works. So it is amazing that it is happening here. And even better than that, um, it is the name given to this event, the TEDx Boulevard Triomphal. It is not just a simple place, but it is a message given to us, because Triomphal is an adjective which can be translated in French as triumphant, meaning it is the quality of a winner. And a winner has success, and success is equal to greatness. This message shows us that every single one of us can, can walk on the boulevard that brings us to greatness. Simply because... <laughs> simply because we are all given the ability by nature to be great and achieve greatness. Greatness flows in our veins. And that is how I can see many amazing people in this room. And even for those who dream big, believe in your greatness, and you will see it tomorrow. Now, the paradox with this ability that is given to us is that we can still see many people struggling with their lives and having a hard time making a living. And you might ask why, since greatness flows in our veins. Well, the answer is quite simple. It is simply that we all, most of us, do not know that we possess such an ability and that we battle for that ability. We are facing a war. A war for our greatness. A war that we do not even know is happening. We do not know that we are fighting for our own greatness, for something that is ours. And like in every war, there are two parts, and the first part is you. But who knows who the second part is, or what the second force, the antagonist to your life is? Can anybody think of an answer? I don't think anybody can, because you don't know what it is, and because you don't know what it is, you don't know where to fight. And this is when I would like to tell you who is your greatest enemy, and what can be done to fight this movement that we all face, but not necessarily know. We live in a world that is characterized by the integration and the interaction among people, businesses, and world governments. And this process has been put and set forward by the internet, the flow of information, investments, and international trade. And this process is known as globalization. But then globalization is too big of a term, simply because, well, it explains, as the word says, many things in the world and affects many aspects. But we want to focus on the aspect of globalization that affects the individual. This phenomenon that is pushing the cultures of the world to become more and more similar, forcing people to undermine their own traditional ways of doing things to accept a more global view. And as such, in this train of thought, we'll speak about cultural globalization. Now, cultural globalization's mission is to make every single one of us more or less the same. As we start eating the same foods, dressing the same way, we watch the same movies, and share the same activities. Doing that isn't a problem. But when we do that and we forget what we have that is original, then that's when globalization becomes a problem. Because globalization has the, uh, the, the, the characteristic of putting people into boxes, into boxes where they might not necessarily belong. And these boxes are designed in a way that either you fit in the box or you are rejected by the box. And because we humans hate resentment, loneliness, and rejection, we force ourselves into those boxes without even really 
belonging into these boxes. Today, globalization, as our enemy of war, is using the strongest and greatest weapons to push us to forget where we are going and finding the key to greatness. It is preventing us from walking on the boulevard triomphal that we should all be walking on. And the strongest weapon that globalization uses is our feelings. And the feeling it attacks is fear. Many people today fear to be misunderstood. They fear to stand out. Standing out today has become a problem. People are scared to have a different skin tone. They are scared to eat their own foods. They are scared to do things differently, simply because our minds have been conditioned to accept things a certain way, to accept a specific view. But is there really a problem when you have to stand out? Do you think our differences make us uncool, annoying, or just too much of a nerd? And I remember growing at school as a hardworking student, it was difficult for me. But then isn't being hardworking a quality they ask from students? Isn't it? All students must be hardworking. But because the people around me didn't work hard, whenever I would use technical words, words I would look, they would look at me and think I'm an alien. And just because it was at a young age and nobody understood me. And looking back, I can see that these types of experiences have suppressed my growth. And this is just showing at a small scale how globalization can suppress people. And because we are scared to be misunderstood, then it creates the belief in a certain myth, a myth that I call the perfect copy. Today, people idealize whatever the media gives them, whatever they see on screens, whatever they see on their phones. Know that the internet is a catalyzer for cultural globalization. I always say it is never an accident that the internet has become so available and at the reach of everyone. Because those who know how to use this platform know that those who can't use it will be distracted, forgetting to walk on the boulevard triomphal that we all have to walk on. Now, as I, I was saying, today people want to be exactly like famous icons, people they see on TV, and they think their way of living is the right way of living. When we do not even know how those people got there, we just see what is given to us and we accept it, bringing us back to the medieval period. Because in the medieval period, in the Middle Ages, the ages of kings and fairies, for those who believe it, people accepted everything that was given to them. If a Greek or Roman scholar said something, it was an accepted truth. If the church or the religious body of a community said another thing, it was accepted. But then the paradox with this in this modern generation is that we live in a world dominated by scientific, the scientific method where we want proof for anything. So how can we, we, accept something that people have already chewed and eat it? And I know as much as you love your spouse, your husband, your children or your mother, you would never eat something they have already chewed, would you? Because if you would, you're very weird. <laughs> but this just shows us how we're doing something as disgusting, but we do not even know that we're doing it. We do not fight back against the silent force that globalization is. Because we can do the same things, but because each and every one of us has their own boulevard to greatness, we will never do them the same way. And this is what globalization is slowly extinguishing without any of us knowing it, the difference. The difference that makes us the people that are in front, that makes you guys the people that are in front of me today. That is what it is trying to eradicate. And this is where I tell you, what is the weapon, the key to fight against globalization? The silent force that many people here have not considered until today. And one, I will tell you, this, this is what I believe is the key to greatness. You might think you know it already. And when I'm going to say it, you'll react like, okay, can be found in any motivational video. Um, we will, can find it on the internet, plenty of videos, and yeah. And I can't deny it. It's the truth. You can find it anywhere. 
But the thing is, many of you have only heard about it. You refuse to put it in your minds and you don't know it. So what I believe is the key to greatness is only the ability to know, to know yourself. And I can see by some people's reactions that I anticipated you well, that you think it's too much said. But bear with me and listen, because these thoughts are only the effects of globalization on your conditioned mind that push you to neglect the importance of knowing yourself, the importance of finding who you are. And a, few time, a bit of time ago, I was thinking the same way. I'm in my final year, and hopefully next year I'll be in college. And as most of you know, it is a crucial part of our development, a crucial part where we determine the vision where we are going. And I want to share a few of the things that I have learned that have helped me find myself. And first, it is the vision. Many of us, especially youngsters today, teenagers, we lack the direction where we want to go. We do not know who we want to be in the next five years or even tomorrow. We only live on a day-to-day -day basis. And when your life becomes a routine, you know that something is wrong. Because your life should be like a business, always growing, eliminating competition, controlling most of the market, and having the best reputation. But you can never do that when you only blindly try to be like all the other businesses around you. How will you stand out when you stay the same, you sell the same products without bringing any innovation? Nobody will come to you because they can come next to the next person. And once you have the vision of who you want to be, you should have the ability to cut down the distractions, discipline yourself from the ideas that globalization brings into your mind. And the only way to do that is to control your mind. Now, controlling your mind has a big paradox because out of the 30,000 thoughts that our brain can generate in one day, we only control about 15% of those thoughts because the rest is controlled by our subconscious. Now, with such a low ratio of control, how can we imagine or pretend to control our minds? Well, simply, the answer is hidden in physics. And for those who remember your science classes, you might relate in the law of conservation of energy, which states that energy is neither created nor destroyed, it is rather transformed. So how does it work with the mind? It just paraphrases the idea that whatever information you put in by feeling, hearing, seeing, or even smelling, and also tasting, it goes into you and it is processed by your mind, processed by your subconscious, and it brings a fruit that either comes out through your actions, your speech, or your thoughts. And this is the greatest secret behind the greatest geniuses. They literally absorb their fields in a way that they don't even need to think anymore about their, what they're doing because their minds are constantly working on the information they have received. And when the fruit is made, the fruit of their information is made, it is sent into their consciousness and they believe it's a revelation but it is simply the fruit of the information and the efforts they have been making. Now live your life to control your mind. Read the right books, watch the right documentaries, invest the right time in your vision to control the person that you will be tomorrow. And finally, once you have done these two thing, things, you have a vision and you can control your mind, I guess you have found yourself at 95%. But then, where did the other 5% go? Well, it goes simply in one simple aspect that many of us neglect, which is to look into the right mirrors. Or in simpler words, to listen. Listen to the people around you. Because the people around you are your mirrors. Mirrors show things exactly how, how they are. And the people around you, the ones you spend the most time with, will tell you who you really are. And you have to listen to them because they will tell you where you flop and where you top. And listening to these people, I discovered that when I discovered who I am, it was so obvious because people had always been telling me, but I was just thinking they were flattering me and complimenting me, and it was normal. But then the truth is, 
we have to listen. We always think that the objective view of people is not important. We think we're right. Because we're born selfish and arrogant, we think that what I say is the truth. And what I say is the truth because you guys are listening to me today. So what I am saying is the truth. But yes, we need to listen. And as I discovered who I am, and I won't tell you, I won't finish this talk without telling you who I am, it was so obvious. So I encourage you guys to always have an opinion from those who are always around you because they have so much to say. A mirror is silent, but it always has a lot to say on your life. And now that you know who is your greatest enemy, the one preventing you from walking on the boulevard triomphal, that is glo cultural globalization, and that you know that your greatest weapon is to know yourself, to find yourself, what will you do now? Will this knowledge stay heard about to you or will it become known to you? Now I will tell you what will make the difference between these two ideas. And that is simply the speed at which you start implementing these concepts in your life. The faster you understand that your identity is being threat threatened, the faster you will know these concepts. And if you start tonight, you go back home and think on my words, in the next few days, months, or even years, you'll be thinking about this young man and say that he has changed my life forever. And that is who I am. Thank you.